This podcast is about introducing our fans to the animals, plants, and other products that we work with at Josh's Frogs. It's an opportunity to paint a picture of our hobby that is refreshing. We want you guys to be successful with the animals that you're keeping, and we want our hobby to grow ethically and sustainably into the future. Welcome to the Josh's Frogs podcast. Uh, Today, I have Lori with me to talk about crested geckos. But before we do that, I'm going to tell you that the Josh's Frogs podcast is sponsored by Josh's Frogs. We're your one-stop shop for all of your reptile and amphibian needs. So we sell all the live feeders, all the live plants, all the live reptiles and amphibians, and all the supplies you need to take care of them. Uh, With our blogs, articles, and videos, our great customer service, and our unmatched health guarantees on all our animals and insects, um, we're here to make uh, it able for you to connect with nature easily. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to Lori, um, who works in our uh, Crested Gecko room, and she does some other Mm -hmm. um, animals as well, too. So so Lori, tell me a little bit about how you came to Josh's Frogs, and then, then tell me a little bit about what you do here. Cool. So, uh, as Josh said, I'm Lori Parker. I work with the New Caledonian species, mainly our crested geckos. Um, Actually, uh, a few years ago, I used to work at a pet store in Lansing. It's a really nice place. Um, And actually, they used to wholesale from Josh's Frogs. And that was my first interaction with, you know, the company. And I was like... Well, wow, there's there's other places other than, you know, just pet stores. And, like, I've always wanted to work with animals my whole life. And I wanted to do more in the uh, hobby, in the industry um, for the pets and such. So it's kind of my first blurb is, it's funny stories. I used to work with a guy who also was named Josh. I'm like, oh, is this your business? And he's like, no. <laughs> That's hilarious. So it's funny. So I was like, oh, my God. you I mean, you raise dirt frogs. Like, is this your business? And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I first learned about Josh's frogs. All right. And what year did you come to Josh's frog? When did, what year did you start working here? I believe it was 2021. 2021. Uh, All right. Like, yeah. And then kind of describe, like, what do you do on a day-to-day basis? What's your week look like? What do your days look like? What, what are the kind of things that you're doing on a regular basis? Busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I come in every morning. I check uh, the incubators for the eggs to see who is all hatched. And then I collect the eggs and we have uh, Google Forms where we keep all this information documented where like we mark down like what breeder group they came from. So like their parents and whatnot. And then the day that they hatched Um, and then actually crested geckos and most of the new cow species, including like gargoyles and chihua, also come with a birth certificate. Um, and on that little tiny card, I should have brought one up, but it, uh, it has the morph information, the parent information, the day they were born. And I also weigh them too, to make sure they're a healthy weight when they hatch out. Cause that can tell me if there's something wrong. Like if the parents are producing weak offspring and they're way underweight or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it gives me also a better idea of how, you know, our breeders are doing too. But all of that information comes with your animal when you purchase a crested gecko or gargoyle, uh, et cetera. Um, It's just a nice, fun little way of keeping track of their lineage and their genetics and, like, you know, showing, you know, these people that we really care about the animals and where they go after, you know, they've been purchased from us. Um, And then after that, um, usually comes feeding and misting. I usually go through and I mist the entire room. Um, and that is full of like holdbacks and juveniles, adults, babies of the species I work with. Um, and then after that, I usually will go through with a razor blade and I'll scrape off the glass and give a nice little clean. Cause you know, it's, it's important to keep, you know, these enclosures hygienic and clean. And although they are bioactive, you know, isopods, they don't really, Climb up the glass. They can't do that. So they can't get up to the waist. So, you know, scraping it down, you knock it down for them, and then they can um, break it down, and they keep the soil nice and healthy, which is awesome, especially keeping bioactive is... I cannot, like, recommend keeping them that way more than enough. It is awesome. Um, And then after that, depending on, you know, which day of the week it is, it will determine what kind of food I feed them. So... Like, 
on Tuesdays, they would get like either Rapashi, which is our crusted gecko diet mix that we get, or, you know, other people are familiar with Pangea. It's very similar. Um, or on Thursdays, they get insects. So I usually supplement them with our um, Rapashi Calcium Plus. Mm. Um, and it's just like a little shake and bake. You put the crickets in a little deli cup. You put a tiny little bit of that powder on. You shake it around. And then you feed like a couple of crickets per animal that's in the enclosure. And that's usually what I do most of the day. And Ooh. then whatever free time I have goes towards like fixing up enclosures or helping out my teammates. Sometimes, you know, we all get a little behind because there's always stuff to do. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Now, you said you work with a few species in that New Caledonia room. Yeah. Can you kind of compare and contrast? Like, what are the other species and what's what's different between them sure. and crested geckos? Uh, everyone knows crested geckos. If you don't, I'm about to tell you about them. <laughs> <laughs> So I actually brought Freckles up here with me today. He is one of my breeder crested geckos. Um, he's a very sweet boy. They're very soft. Um, they are a little jumpy. They are arboreal species. Come here, buddy. Oh, goodness. You're just going to climb right up my... Okay, yep, right in my hair. Ta-da! <laughs> but... They're super soft. They're awesome. Uh, very handleable. Very docile. Um, even if they bite you, it's not you're not gonna bleed. Um, yeah, they have this unique ability to drop their tail uh, if they feel scared or threatened enough. And unlike most gecko and lizard species, they don't actually regrow their tail. Um, why? I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. Something in their DNA just is like, nope, we're not gonna. I guess, allow you to have that. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Where are you going, buddy? <laughs> but yeah, he is a red super Dalmatian. Um, red refers to his base color, and super Dalmatian is like Dalmatian, um, but he has like 10 times more spots than the average. Usually Dalmatian has like just a couple, but he has them all over his body and all over the place. Yeah, a lot of, a yeah. lot of freckles. And they're kind of actually one of my personal favorite morphs for crested geckos. I just really like the speckled look on them. Um, everyone, you know, they come in so many different colors and patterns. It's like you just don't know what you're going to get yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Um, so these guys, like I said, they're the most handleable, most docile. They're super easy to care for. Gargoyle geckos. Also a new Caledonian species. I didn't bring one up with me today. Mm -hmm. um, they tend to be more pot-bellied. Uh, they have little nubs on the top of their head, which is where they get the name um, gargoyle gecko. Really? Cool. And they kind of just bumps on a log. They just sit there all day. They don't really do much. They can be kind of grumpy. <laughs> um, their teeth are quite sharp, so they when they bite you, they meet it. <laughs> I've been bitten a couple times, and it's, it's not fun. <laughs> but it's not the end of the world, either. Um, my other favorite is Chihua geckos. They're almost like a weird mix. I say, like, I describe them like a cross between, like, a crested gecko and a lichianus. Like, mm. they have similar proportions to cresteds, only they don't have the crests on their head or their eyelashes. Um... And they're a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. They have a prehensile tail. They're also called the prehensile tail New Caledonian gecko. Um, there's two locales of them. There's the main island and the pine island. And that means mainlands are from the main island off of New Caledonia. And New Caledonia also has several other little tiny islands around that. And Pine Isles is an isle that is off of New Caledonia. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah. Um, other species I've worked with too is Eurodactylodes, which is chameleon geckos. Those guys are so awesome. Um, they're small. They only get like a couple inches. Um, they almost have a chameleon shaped hunchback, you know, like how yep. like chameleons have that arc yep. and, um, they have this defense where if they get spooked, they secrete this stinky, sticky, gross liquid, um, <laughs> from their tail. And it, oh, <laughs> I hate it when they do that because it's so stinking gross. <laughs> um, it kind of is like if you've ever accidentally squished like a stink bug, it's yep. very intense smell immediately. <laughs> and like, if you don't wash your hands, like it's going to stink yep. and stay there. 
But they're so cute. They're awesome. And they're little eggs. They lay two eggs at a time. They look like little Tic Tacs. Oh, they're so small. <laughs> Now, you mentioned that this guy is a boreal. T- yes. tell, tell us what that means, and then tell us a little bit about caging and how you set them up. Yeah, for sure. So arboreal means they are um, more of a, like up in the trees or up in shrubs um, compared to terrestrial, terrestrial animals. You know, they lack the toe pads that these guys have. And on their toe pads, there's these little micro hairs that allows them to cling to surfaces. Um, and most arboreal species, they either A, have those toe pads or B, they have really long spindly fingers or claws, sometimes both even. And so these guys, yeah, they hang out not super high up in the trees, but mm, I don't actually know how far up they hang out, but mostly in shrubs and bushes and whatnot. Um, they lay their eggs in the soil. They lay two eggs at a time. It's like probably the only time you're really going to see them on the forest floor is when they're laying eggs. They actually bury themselves completely and lay their eggs, and it's so funny. I remember the first time I I saw this, I thought my crested was channeling her inner ostrich because she had just her (laughs) head buried and nothing else. And I'm like, what are you doing, honey? And she's just like... You know, a couple days later, she had eggs, and it was so cool. It was like the neatest experience I ever had. But yeah. Um, Talk a little bit about caging sizing. How are you keeping them and what do you recommend that people do? So I'd say minimum for an adult crested gecko, which is freckles here. Um, An 18, 18, 1824 is perfectly fine. Um, However, the animal will never complain about having larger space. And the most important thing for these guys is um, making sure they have the up and down space. Um, they climb. It's what they do. They like to hang around, um, provide lots of, uh, opportunities for them to hide too, because they want to be able to be hidden most of the day. They're a crepuscular species. So they're going to be up active early, early, like morning and super early, like, you know, dawn and dusk basically. And they do wander around at night all night long. And then most of the time they sleep during the day. Um, So, yeah, it's definitely important to give them more up and down space than vertical because they're going to utilize the up and down space. Um, Yeah, like something kind of like this behind me, but Uh taller Taller? would be better for them. Now, when when people are used to keeping other types of lizards, you know, like you say, you have a bearded dragon. It's this giant Mm. heat lamp that is on it. Maybe leopard geckos. You're talking about heat pads. Talk about heating, lighting, and how that differs from bearded dragons, leopard geckos, and and any other ways that that it's different keeping crested's. The other reason I also recommend them as a very good, like, first time, you know, reptile pet is they don't require intensive amount of heat. Uh, They do best at room temperature, which is like mid 70s. Um, If you offer them a basking source, um, they prefer about 80 degrees. And I'd recommend you do that in like one of the corners of the enclosure so they can thermoregulate. That way, if they get too warm after basking, they have the choice to go cool off. Cool. Um, as far as lighting goes, they are a Ferguson one um, animal. So most people debate whether or not uh, new cow species need UV. I'm always going to say yes. Every animal utilizes UV in some way, depending on... You know, how intense it is depends on where they're from, really. These guys are going to be, like, in the trees and the canopies and whatnot. So they're going to have, like, dappled sunlight, right? So they're not sitting directly out in the sun all day. But it is important to give them UV. It helps keep their uh, bones sound. A common thing that most reptiles get is MBD, which is uh, metabolic bone disease, Uh, And that makes their bones warpy and brittle and really soft. And if, you know, it goes untreated, um, it really affects the animal's quality of life. Yep. So. 
Yeah. I know, I know commonly people sometimes will, will say, hey, crusty geckos really don't need a light, but we're mm-hmm. recommended not only that they need a light, but then a, a little bit of UVB would be good for them. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, they are a Ferguson Zone 1 animal, so they don't need a super intense UV spot. Um, honestly, what we use here is, um, I believe it's the 5.0 bulbs um, from either Arcadia or uh, what is the other one? Is it Zoomed? Zoomed I think yeah. it's Zoomed. Yeah, and um, I believe on Arcadia it says like 6% UV. That's like the perfect one for them. Cool, cool. Yeah. cool. Now you talked a little bit about this guy, uh, the Morse. Can you talk a little bit about some of the other Morse and how they might be different looking yeah. at what he looks like? Yeah, I actually wrote a Morph guide. Um, I haven't published it yet, but I have <laughs> it on my phone ready. So what makes these guys so unique compared to, you know, other reptiles out there is that they just come in so many crazy colors and patterns. And what they are is uh, polymorphic. And if you don't know what that is, it's um, the infinite number of colors and patterns and variation combinations uh, in the wild. These crested geckos are very different, but through selective breeding, uh, we've created a large diversity in these genes. Um, With that being said, you know, it might be hard for the average person to try and identify morphs if, you know, they're just learning about it. When I first started here, I honestly did not know anything about morphs. (laughs) I knew crested geckos existed, but I didn't know that like lily whites were a thing or like Dalmatian or Harlequin or pinstripe. So all of this I had to learn, right? Mm -hmm. So... Through my experience, I wanted to share what I learned um, and make it easy for other people, too, to quickly identify their animal. Um, So with that being said, uh, the morph represents the specific coloration and pattern of the animal. Um, And there are also independent traits, which are structural to the color. So example, he is a red super Dalmatian. The red refers to his base color, right? He's a very rusty red color. Dalmatian is actually a trait, not necessarily a morph. Um, And that trait is all those little speckles all over his body. So you can get things such as like Harlequin Dalmatians. And Harlequins, you know, they have different patterns. They've got like, you know, this creamy back with like interesting little swirls on them. And their side, their flanks will have kind of like a up and down zigzag look that matches the base color on their dorsal. Um, But then they also can have Dalmatian speckling on top of that. So the morph would be a Harlequin with Dalmatian in them. Now, you mentioned a couple other morphs. Uh, Talk Mm -hmm. about pinstripe. What is pinstripe? What is lily white? Talk about those two. Okay, yeah. So pinstripe, gosh, I should have brought more geckos with me. (laughs) (laughs) So pinstripe refers to the lateral striping that starts usually at their fringe and it ends at the base of their tail. If it is a full pinstripe, on both sides, those stripes will basically meet down at the hips. If it is a partial pin, that means there is a break in the segment. So it's not like a full stripe. You have little breaks in the pattern. Um, And then lily white crested geckos, uh, they tend to range in, you know, reds and cream colors, some really deep dark browns. Um, They mostly have like a creamy white back. Their tails usually are mostly white their bellies are super 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 white Uh, and even the knuckles around their toes on both the front and the back feet have like a white little line going around them and they are an interesting morph um i feel like they were i guess discovered a couple Mm -hmm. years ago Mm -hmm. they really gained a lot of popularity and I actually have a little section I wrote for Lily Whites. Here we go. Um, So yeah, like I said, the geckos flank, belly, and tail are solid white or a cream color. Um, These geckos cannot be bred together. Um, So example, do not breed two Lily Whites together. Um, It doesn't hurt the gecko itself. Their offspring most likely don't make it. It Mm -hmm. is an incomplete co-dominant gene. 
Um, so it'd be kind of like trying to breed two, you know, albino animals together. And most of the time, you know, they already both have like recessive genes and such. So yep. they're just not going to survive. They're just set up for failure. So with that being said, you can breed a lily white with any other crested gecko morph and be fine. Um, the thing that's so interesting is you're always going to have like a 50-50 chance of the offspring either being like, you know, a normal looking more like the other parent, or you will always have at least another lily white baby, which is so cool because I've been experimenting with different color combinations. Mm. I've gotten these crazy tiger uh, red lily whites. I've also gotten like phantom pinstripe lily whites. Um, yeah, it is so fun seeing like what, you know, combinations you can make. Yeah. So they're cool. All right, Lori, if you're going to talk to somebody who's considering another, mm -hmm. a, a new pet, uh, maybe it's their first pet, maybe it's not their first yeah. pet. And they're, they're saying like, Hey, lizards look good. What, like what, what would be, what would be the reason you'd say like, Hey, yeah, crested gecko is the one for you. Why, why would you say that? Something that a lot of people overlook when it comes to reptiles is, uh, you know, example, cat or dog, they require a lot more maintenance. They need much more care. Um, and sometimes you just don't have the time for that. Like if you're someone who travels a lot, you know, you got to find someone to pet sit all the time yeah. or you need to find places that'll like let you take your animals with you. Reptiles actually do really well. Um not being handled all the time, actually. They kind of prefer it. Mm. Um, they are uh, intelligent. However, they don't necessarily sh share like uh, affection the same way like mammalians do. Yep. And these guys, you know, I mean, with my crested geckos, I feed them like twice a week. And they're honestly the most low-maintenance pet I've ever had. I just make sure they get misted at least once or twice a day. Um they can tolerate a little bit of drought, um, but their enclosure should never get below 40% humidity. Mm -hmm. They like it between like, uh, like anywhere between like 60 to 70. You could even do higher spikes of like 80% um, once in a while for them. Asian, yeah. But yeah, you set them up bioactively. And like, honestly, like once you have their entire enclosure set up, they're sincerely like the easiest pet reptile to take care of. You just have to feed and water and clean. Okay. All right. You you hit on breeding a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody was like, hey, I would like to breed my crested geckos. What, sure. what's, what's the beginning tips that you give the person? Like, how do you how do you get them ready? What do you do to breed them? How do you do that kind of stuff? Right. So uh, I'm always going to advocate for doing your research, doing your homework. Um, there can be a lot of confusing information out there. So definitely, like, you know, choose selectively. Um, what sources you go off of. There's tons. Um, these guys are not terribly complicated when it comes to breeding. Um, again, you set them up normally, uh, like, you know, in an 18, 18, 24 or larger, uh, bioactive is best. And they need at least four inches of substrate because they like to bury their eggs pretty deep. You need to make sure the substrate stays moist, not like sopping wet, but just moist mm -hmm. um, because their eggs will dry up and desiccate and then you won't have baby geckos. Mm -hmm. But these guys are super docile. So like the way we breed them here is we have one male to two females um, the reason we offer more than one female is because sometimes the male can be a little bit of a pest and he might stress out the single female too much wanting to breed all the time. Yep. Um, so it's best to have two females. So he has two partners to bounce between. So it kind of gives the other one a rest while the other one is like laying her eggs or something yep. or whatever. Um, and you know, you really don't have to worry about them fighting too much. Um, if you had two males, I would definitely not recommend that. <laughs> they, they don't like each other. It's like, I think the only time I've really seen them be super violent is when people accidentally like, you know, put two males together, but it's very easy to, uh, sex them as well. And I can show you here if you'll hold still for me right here at the base of the tail, you can see there's this little bulge that's called the hemipenal bulge. 
Um, only males have that. Females, it's super flat. They don't have the little pouch there. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, like, why that. you gotta do me like that? <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely figure out um, what your goal is, whether you wanna do it just for fun mm -hmm. or if you have breeding projects in mind, um, stuff like that. Cool. Like I said, definitely do your research, figure out what you want to do with your project. Cool. And then, you know, once you figure that out, you can get started. And like I said, they're, they're very easy to care for and very easy to breed. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Lori. Yeah. I, last thing I want to do with you is a lightning round. So I've got okay. a bunch of questions. Sure. Feel free to say pass or I don't know on any of these, but I'll uh, start shooting them off to you. All right. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Sweet. If money and space were no issue, what is your dream pet? I have many, but <laughs> I'll, so I'll start with my top. Uh, I will say Europlatus fantasticus. It is also known as the satanic leaftail gecko. They're so cool. <laughs> they look cool. like little dead leaves. Yep. They're amazing. <laughs> All right. Besides Josh's frogs, what's another person in or uh, company in our industry that's either producing great products or great animals? Who who would you like to call out? Um, I have a few actually. I'd like to call out Herp Time. They do some amazing uh, work with uh, a null species and a bunch of micro geckos, and I've never seen anybody's animals look so fantastic. Um, there's also some Europlatus breeders I really like. There's, uh, I believe they're called Only Fants. There's also Rock City Fants. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What was your first pet? My first pet, if we're talking reptile wise, was a leopard gecko, actually. What was your first non reptile pet? My first non reptile pet actually was a prairie dog. I was not expecting a uh, prairie dog. That's yeah, her awesome. name was Sabby, and I miss her a lot. <laughs> All right. What did you want to be when you were a kid? Steve Irwin. <laughs> I wanted to be like Steve Irwin so bad. I still do, kind of. <laughs> hey, you still have time. You still have time. Yeah. Uh, when you have an extra hour of free time, what do you? how do you spend it? What do you do? Well, if I'm not researching uh, new species that I am head over heels for, I also do art. Oh, cool. Uh, give us an example. What type type of art are you doing? All. All. <laughs> nice. I uh, sculpt. I paint. I also um, do a lot of digital work too. Oh, cool. So yeah, it's fun. Cool. All right. If you had a bunch of people listening to you, you had a bunch of ears. What's one thing that you would tell people? You know, honestly, I think um, just communication in general. Um, just be kind to each other. And try to be understanding. You never know what someone's going through. And sometimes it's hard to, you know, see the world through their perspective. That's cool. That's cool. Thank you, Lori. Mm -hmm. All right. Last question. Favorite animal or plant in the world? What's your favorite? Okay. I am a big crocodilian person. I really love both the American alligator and the Cuvier's dwarf caiman. I actually have a necklace that is a gator skull oh, that's cool. I got from this company called fire and bone and um, they take 3d scans of animal bones and skeletons and they digitalize them and shrink them down and turn them into actual like jewelry that's really cool yeah that's really cool cool Awesome, Lori. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing everything about Crested Geckos. Yeah. Um, looking forward to seeing the new projects that you're working with and all the cool geckos uh, that you and uh, the reptile team are producing. So thanks for coming yeah, on. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. If you enjoy this content and want to stay up to date, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow us across social media. We always want to bring you the best content. So let us know if you, what you think in the comments. And for all your reptile and amphibian needs, be sure to check us out at joshesfrogs.com. We have an amazing selection. Until next time, stay curious, stay froggy, and keep exploring.